and Allah tells you to search for him. Every single prophet, every single messenger of Allah searched. They went out and looked. They look up into the heavens. You know, Allah says at the end of, of Surah Ali Imran, people look up into the sky, into the earth. Oh Allah, you didn't create this for no reason. Oh Allah, I don't know enough to know the reason. Oh Allah, I'm not sure about anything. I don't, yani I'm, not, I'm not special. رَبَّنَا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا مُنَادِيًا يُنَادِي لِلْإِيمَانِ فَآمَنَّا look at, look at the words of the pious that Allah records their dua. They say, Oh Allah, we heard someone calling. I didn't understand everything. Calling us to faith. And آمِنُوا بِرَبِّكُمْ فَآمَنَّا Oh Allah, I just believed. I believed in what you sent. قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا we hear, we obey. Oh Allah, forgive us. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw Oh Allah, I'm gonna make mistakes. Don't hold it against me if I make a mistake or even if I did it on purpose, if I made a sayyi'ah. Finding Allah. So there's a search. And that search begins with ilm, knowledge. See, it's one thing to say, oh, I know, brother, I know, I, mean, I know enough. No, you don't know. Here's what you don't know. The moment you think you know, you don't know. The moment you think, I have enough, you've, you have nothing. The moment you think, oh, I know how to read the Qur'an, it's enough, you, you don't know how to read the Qur'an. The moment you think I've memorized enough, you have, you haven't, you've done nothing. You've lost your way to Allah. Because the first of commands to our Prophet ﷺ was Iqra. The first commands of the Prophet ﷺ is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says him, Fa'lam, come to a certainty of knowledge. Annahu la ilaha illallah. That none is worthy of worship but me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wastaghfir li dhambik wa mu'mineen and ask Allah, ask me for forgiveness and also for the believers. For yourself and then the believers. Muhammad Sallallahu for yourself, for Muhammad and the believers Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how do you find Allah? Knowledge. And knowledge begins by curing, look at that word, shifa, curing your ignorance, my ignorance. The only ailment the Prophet ﷺ describes as being an illness, and it's an infective, infectious illness, is ignorance of our deen. The Prophet ﷺ, he talks about lacking an understanding of our deen as a disease. One day there were some Sahaba, the hadith is in Bukhari, and there's riwayat in Muslim with abridged versions. On Sahabi, he was riding with his companions. They were out on a journey. He fell off the camel. Shuj, his head was split open. He hit a rock when he fell down. And his companions, they got off the camels. They wrapped his turban tight. They saved his life. He came back to consciousness. And this is near the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. And when he woke up, you know, they said, Alhamdulillah, you're fine now. He began to get stressed drinking and eating fine time of salah comes all right make wudu he goes what do you mean make wudu can't i make tayammum they say what are you talking about what you think you're going to invent your own deen what do you mean make tayammum he said look man look my head if, if i take the turban off if i put water i'm gonna die they said allah says in the quran look sometimes we, we're so ignorant we think we know what we're talking about, but we're fools. We have no ilm. They use the Quran, they say, no, no, no. Allah said, Allah said, فَإِن لَمْ تَجِدُوا مَاءً فَتَيَمَّمُوا صَعِيدًا طيب. If you don't have water, make tayammum. Then you can use the earth to make a ritual cleansing. But we have water. What, you're going to make your own madhab? You're going you're gonna to think for yourself? This is what Allah said. 
This was Rasulullah This is the Sunnah. He said, you sure? They said, yeah. Took his turban off, made wudu, died. Got infected, died. They buried him in the desert. They came home a few days later. They see the Prophet ﷺ. Prophet asked, where is he? فَقَالُوا مَا تَيَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَحَكَى لَهُ حِكَايَةً They told him the story. فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَتَلُوهُ They murdered him. They killed him. أَلَا سَأَلُوا How dare they not come and ask me? How dare they think that they know enough just because they read a verse of the Qur'an? إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ الْعِيِّ السُّؤَالِ the cure of ignorance is to ask a question. See, sometimes you get these young people, they read a little bit of Quran, memorize the Quran, mashallah. They speak Arabic, mashallah, tabarakallah. Oh no, no, Allah said, the, sun the Prophet said, the Sunnah is this, and wallahi, they are further away from the Sunnah, although they claim it, وَلَكِنْ جُهَلَاء But it's an infectious illness. أَلَا سَأَلُوا Don't they ask those who are kibar, senior to them in life experience, in knowledge, in behavior, in opportunity, in struggle, in da'wah. أَلَا سَأَلُوا How dare they not ask? See, sometimes we have these questions, they're in here, in our chest. And we're too shy. You know, you might be shy to ask your father. I get a lot of my students, many of them, mashallah, alhamdulillah, it's beautiful to see all of you here. Stop it, Brahim. How you doing, brother? You good? Alhamdulillah. You get a lot of students, they ask questions. I don't mean Ibrahim does, but I'm just saying. They ask questions that they wouldn't ask their father. Ask about homosexuality. Ask about drugs. They ask about terrorism, extremism, khawarij, ISIS. Sometimes you can't ask everyone. And not everyone who dresses like this has knowledge. Yani, I dress like this because I'm an Arabi. Yani, I'm an Arab. So I'm an Arabi. It's easy. I don't, you know, Sheikh Wa'il can get away with Chinese. I, I can't get away with the Chinese, brother. You look good in the Chinese. Mashallah. I've seen that get up, bro. I can't get away with that. <laughs> I can't do that one. I'm an Arabi. I can't get away with Sharwal Kameez. I can't, you know, I can't do that. So I'm an Arabi. This is what I wear back home in Egypt. This is my clothes. I can get away with a suit as well because I'm Canadian. Right? Baseball hat and all. It's not by the clothes, it's not someone who sits in the masjid a lot that that means they have knowledge. It's not because they speak Arabic, it means they have knowledge. You have to ask someone who knows. فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ They're the ones who point you to Allah. So people ask questions. Don't ever have a question in your heart where you think you can just search for an answer and come up with it on your own. Oh, I saw a YouTube video about it, brother. Oh yeah, I read, I googled, Sheikh, you know, it's not actually not Sheikh Google, it's Uncle Google. Why is it Uncle Google? Because all of us have that one crazy uncle who knows everything, kind of, and he kind of fakes you out. Like, he'll tell, you'll be like, man, how do you know how far the moon is? It's like Uncle Google. But not everything he says is right. You've got to verify it with truth with a reliable corroborating evidence the prophets of allah did the same and i want to end with this i'm going to give you just three examples from the prophets of allah asking questions that you and i would not ever dare ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala musa asks allah you know musa speaks to allah bila hijab no barrier jibril doesn't need to come and, and deliver a message he speaks to allah direct وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah speaks to him direct, Moses. After he speaks to Allah, Musa says, as is in Surah Al-A'raf, رَبِّي أَرِنِي أَنظُرْ إِلَيْكَ My Lord, let me see you. I want to see you. Allah says, لَن تَرَانِي 
You can never see me in this life, waking up like the way you are, as you are, living like this, you will never see me. But look, Allah doesn't just say, you can't see me. Allah gives him evidence why. Look to that distant mountain. If it remains as you see it, I'll let you see me. When Allah's magnificence became known to the mountain in part, it was destroyed and Musa fell down dead. Allah brought him back to life to prove a point. He asks the question, I want to I, I wanna know. Ibrahim asks Allah as is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Because I'm telling you, if you have a question, you can't just keep it. You got to ask. Ibrahim says to Allah, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhyi al-mawta. Oh Allah, show me how you bring the dead to life. Allah says, awalam tu'min. Is it because you doubt? You don't believe? You don't believe I can do it, Ibrahim? No, Allah, I believe in you, O oh Allah. But my heart, I, I just want it to be at ease, meaning there's something here in my chest. So Allah says, well, if you Allah doesn't say if you believe, khalas, forget it. Allah says, you believe? I'll still show you. Take four birds, different shapes and colors and sizes and feathers. Cut them into small pieces. Mix them up. Put some on every distant mountain. And then call them to you. They will come putting themselves back together and fly back to you. Allahu Akbar. Isa alayhi salam. The Hawariyeen, the believers, the Sahaba of Jesus alayhi salam. They believe in him. They saw him with their own eyes by the power of Allah. Bring the dead to life. Breathe into a clay model of a bird with the power of Allah came into life. They saw him with the power of Allah cure the blind and the deaf and the, and the mute. All of this. And they still ask. They say, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an yunazzil alayna ma'idata min as sama It's the name of the fifth chapter. Ask Allah to, uh, the sixth chapter, uh, uh, fifth chapter. Ask Allah to bring down a table spread from the heaven. Something we can eat from. Takunu lana eida. We'll take it as a day of celebration. And so it's a day that we will be proud of knowing Allah brought heavenly food down to us. Qala taqullah. He said, fear Allah. What's wrong with you people? Everything you saw, you want more? They have a question. Allah says, I will answer. Qala inni munazziluha alaykum. I will bring it down to you. But the one who eats from it, and then disbelieves, Allah gives them the answer to the question. So that brings us back to you. Who do you ask? And what do you ask about? Do you even know what questions to ask? Have you taken it serious, this, this deen you have in Allah, that you have with Allah? This ahd, this amana that is on your shoulders, the shoulders of humanity, that the heavens and the earth said, we don't want it. We can't bear it. The mountain said, oh Allah, we can't bear it. Three questions that I want you to begin with. The first question, is, do I love Allah? Have I chosen Allah? Do I, yani, see, you might think that you're just a Muslim just because you were born Muslim. Mula wallahi, it's not that easy. You're not a Muslim just because you were born Muslim. You're a Muslim because you made a choice. Aslam tawajhaka lillah. 
you have to give yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are things that are conditional to your belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, so do you I love Allah? Have I chosen Allah? Have I submitted to Allah? That's the first step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, have I walked and taken the first step on his sirat al-mustaqim? Have I planned to take the steps that will lead me to Jannah? Or am I just living life by accident? Whatever happens, happens. If my parents take me to the masjid, I go to the masjid. If they don't, I'm not gonna go. If my father tells me, did you pray? I pray. If he doesn't, I don't. If my mother doesn't take me to Duxi, yes, I know, Wariya brothers. Inshallah, Wariya. Huh? If my mother takes me to Duxi, I go. If she doesn't, I don't. Wallahi, my father might even be watching. When I first came to memorize the Quran, I was 15 years old, 16 years old maybe. And I said to my father, it was Ramadan, I said, I was ahfaz. He goes, Matat Darsh, you can't do it. I said, why? He said, Yani, I don't think you can do it. I said, no, I can. My brother said, I can do it. He said, okay, do it. I said, can you drive me to the man? He goes, why? Do I drive you to school? Take, go, take, you, how do you go to school? Take, take the bus. Hold the bus, Six months in the snow, brothers. You know Canada? You don't know Canada. Minus 20, man. You want it? You want it? You want the Quran or you don't? You going to go or you going to stay home? What do you want? You want to be spoon fed like a baby? Or are you going to get up and cook it? That's what you got to do. So are you walking the straight path? Or is people carrying you every step of the way? And third and finally, and I leave you with this question, is what am I willing to give up for Allah? What are you willing to give up? Because nothing you're ever going to be successful in in life, except you have to give up something to achieve it. Doesn't matter what it is. You want to be the greatest football player in the world? You got to give something up to kick goals. You got to train, you got to eat right, you got to have this and that. All of that has to be done. And it's the same with Allah. What are you going to give up to be successful in finding Allah? And if you find Allah, it is as the Prophet ﷺ says to Abdullah ibn Abbas, a young man like you, a young Muslim like you, my brothers and sisters. Guard Allah, He will guard you. Guard Allah, you will find Him in front of you, always with you, always leading you in success in life. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and I success in life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bless all of your homes, all of your families. May Allah honor all of your steps in this life. May Allah forgive us our sins and our mistakes. May Allah bring us closer to the sunnah and the ideal of a Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah allow us to love him with our actions, not just the words of our tongue and the emotions of our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has joined us in this blessed day to join us and in this blessed gathering to join us all once again. In Jannah al-Firdaus with Nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum fa astaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim